Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. So in this video, we're going to talk about the reason why when we are coloring a graph, we like to start with the vertex of highest degree. One of my viewers asked this question and I thought it was a really good question and it deserved a video. So when we're coloring a graph, what we like to do is to select a color for each each vertex such that no two connected vertices are the same color. And of course we can always do this by just making every single vertex a different color. But what we like to do is to get the fewest number of colors possible. So it's kind of like a little puzzle and there is no formula for doing this, but what is recommended is to start by coloring the vertex with the highest degree. That means the vertex that's connected to the most other vertices vertices that, that has the greatest number of edges coming in toward it. So for example, in this diagram, in this graph, the vertex right in the middle connects to six different edges. So it is the, uh, that is the greatest number of edges touching any single vertex. So that would be the vertex of highest degree. I think to understand why we would wanna start with six, it's best to look at what would happen if we uh, took a different approach. So the approach I'm going to take is to always choose, when I have to choose between two vertices, I'll always choose the lower degree first. So here's what I mean. I'm going to start with, uh, we have two vertices of degree two, and so I'm gonna color one of them blue. Then I'm going to color as many other vertices blue as I can that are not adjacent to this one. And I'm going to start by looking at what's next lowest degree of a vertex. There's another vertex of degree two. If I color that blue, that would be fine because it's not connected to the other blue vertex. So now um, would the next lowest vertex degree would be three. Um, I have one in each corner. Here, I'm gonna color the upper left corner blue, which is fine because again, it's not adjacent to the other either of the other two blues. And then I can also color the other three blue, and then that's all that I can color blue because each of the black vertices that remains is adjacent to one of the blue vertices. So I can't color any of the fours, the vertices of degree four, and I can't color the vert vertex of degree six blue. So I have to move on to another color. I'm going to choose red for my next color. It doesn't really matter what the color is as long as it's different from blue. And I'm gonna select one of the remaining vertices of degree four, cause that's the lower degree that remains. So I'm gonna pick this one. So now color another vertex red, but it can't be adjacent to the existing red vertex. We'll notice that of the remaining four black vertices, two of degree four are not adjacent. I'm gonna pick the one at the top. Now I have to move on to another color because all the remaining vertices are adjacent to either blue or red. So I'm gonna just do green. Once again, I'm out of the fours and sixes, I'm gonna go with the lower degree. So I'm gonna color this one um, on the right. I'm gonna color that one green. And there's another remaining vertex of degree four that can be colored green because it's not adjacent to it, but we can't color the vertex in the middle green. So I have an orange color left over and I'm gonna color that vertex in the middle orange and we're done. So this is a legitimate coloring, one of many for this graph, but does it have the fewest number of colors possible? It has four colors. It has blue, red, green, and orange. That's four colors. Let's see if we use the approach of coloring the vertex of highest degree first, if we can do better. Now, before we do, notice that that last vertex had to be a different color from all the rest. Because it has highest degree, it was connected to the most different colors of vertices, and we ended up having to put an extra color in the middle there. So what we're gonna see is if we remove all of these colors and start by coloring the vertex in the middle, we're kind of gonna deal with our problem child first, the one that's difficult to color the same as any other vertices because it's connected to so many. So vertex of degree six will color blue. Now at that point, are there any other vertices that we can color the same as that vertex? Yes, there are actually um, two. There's the vertex in the upper right corner of degree two and in the lower left 
corner of degree two. We can't do any of the others because they all are adjacent to that middle vertex. So I'm gonna go with the one in the lower left corner. And then after I do that one, I can also do the one in the upper right. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next higher degree vertices. So I'm gonna have to change to the color red. Out of the threes and fours, we're gonna choose the higher of the two degrees. Doesn't matter which four I pick, I'll pick this one at the top first. If I place that one as being red, then I cannot place the one on the right as being red. I could either do the one on the left or the one on the bottom of the screen, either way. Um, let's say that I choose the one on the left. So at this point, there is still one vertex that is not adjacent to either of the red vertices. So I'm going to to color that vertex, which has degree three red. And then now we're gonna move on to the next color. Out of the three remaining vertices, we have one of degree three and two of degree four. So we're gonna go with one of the higher degrees. I'm gonna go with the four on the right. But we can also color the four on the left because it's not adjacent to that green one. And in fact, we could also color the vertex of degree three. We can color that green as well well. So there's no need to use a fourth color here. And this is often, not always, but often what happens is we get a better coloring in the sense that we can use fewer colors when we start by coloring the one that's connected to the most other um, vertices first. We're not left in the end with this problem child who we have to throw in a, an extra color for. So I hope that answers the question. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel, Ms. Tarn Mathematics, for more math videos.